Hey guys, I had a lot of questions on Friday and Saturday about um, whether to let people go or not, um, which I think the term we're going to use here is furlough on the assumption that we want to keep everybody intact on uh, health insurance in light of the ability to now apply for the uh, <clears throat> Paycheck Protection Program. Just a reminder, you know, really all that's happening right now are banks are uh, assessing initial demand. So if you haven't gotten your application in, don't lose a lot of sleep about it right now, but let's do try to get something in in the next week or so. So make sure that you've got a bank uh, available that's really willing to take the application. So given all that, uh, what I wanted to walk through is a scenario where you really don't have the ability to produce any revenue at all or don't have any sales coming in and you're really wondering, what do I do next? Knowing that there's probably going to be a little bit of a delay in funding, knowing that unemployment benefits are available. So I really feel like this represents the worst case scenario and it represents you know, a scenario where this particular business owner isn't really confident in the recovery that's going to happen either or they feel pretty confident but they feel like um, sometime in the future, you know, it might not be quick, but it might be sometime in the fall or the winter where they start to have recovery. They're just trying to make the best use of the loan forgiveness, keep their team in intact and engaged, um, and at the same time, um, not leave anything on the table or not shoot themselves in the foot. So I think this scenario demonstrates the math pretty well uh, on that front. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, we had a lot of questions about, um, whether or not to furlough employees and when to do it as part of the Paycheck Protection Program this last week as people are starting to apply. So I wanted to give you an example um, of how to properly use furloughs, I think. This is assuming that you can get people back. And really what represents one of the worst case scenarios I think we've had, which is you got little to no revenue, nothing for people to do. They can't telework and you're not really sure when something's going to come back. So I look at this as windows of time. So my key variables in this one, <clears throat> let's assume that I've got $100,000 average payroll that equates to $250,000 in funding. A lot of questions we got asked is, you know, what's the worst case scenario? You know, I, I have a loan at the end. Well, remember the loan terms are two years deferred for six months. So you've got an 18 month amortization schedule that equals $14,000 a month in payments. That just seemed bad. So I don't think we want to pursue that as a strategy. We want to have as little debt as possible at the end of this. So what we're going for is trying to make these two things happen. $188,000 a month or in my eight week time span for payroll. That gets to the 75% forgiveness that's in the latest guidance. And then no more than $62,000 in written utilities to get to max forgiveness. Now, Nothing says that this can't be 80, 20, or 90, 10. It just can't be 70, 30. Otherwise, that 5% is going to be debt over 18 months. Okay, so let's look at the example. Here's how my payroll shakes out. I've got an owner making 15 grand a month. I've got a COO making $10,000 a month. I've got uh, some little bit higher level worker bees making 5k a month. Uh, I've got some lower level worker bees making four, four grand a month. Uh, and then I've got a part timer making three grand a month. And again, the, the distribution doesn't really matter in terms of, um, what you, uh, whether they're hourly or their salary, um, for this exercise. So the first window that I'm looking at trying to cover is this now to 415. 415 because that's the most likely funding window that's going to happen. So in this case, you know, I don't want to have to spend $50,000. So I want to leverage the maximum unemployment benefit that I can possibly get. Because remember, you know, right now someone can make 48 K equivalent a year on unemployment, which is the equivalent of, 4k per month. So the only two people that would have been harmed by this are this guy and this guy. So we're going to keep them on payroll, even if it's potentially reduced. And this guy, this guy, and this guy are the folks that we're going to gas to go on unemployment. Now at face value, it may seem like this guy would be harmed 
But remember, the unemployment dollars are coming out gross. They don't have taxes withhold. So $4,000 a month to that person is going to feel like the five grand a month they were making with the federal withholding. So they shouldn't be harmed. And you, know, you can kind of make a case-by-case -case basis for people um, that are above this amount on whether, which, whether or not you want to augment um, what they're making because at the end of the day, uh, they can still get full, pretty close to full benefit even if they're part-time. Um, with you and then still taking the unemployment benefit, especially on the federal $600 a week side that's come out. So everybody um, beneath the CEO and owner are going to be whole during this time period. So you delayed a lot of the out-of-pocket costs that you had by going to unemployment um, now. So then the next window that you got is 415 to 615 and then what you got to worry about is 615 to 630 and then you got 630 to, to 731 all right so what I would do and remember I'm trying to spend this amount so what I would do in this case is I try to get, and there's nothing that prevents you from doing this as of today. Now they may come up with some regulation in the future, but as of today, there's nothing to prevent you from doing this. Is I would try to get this two week coverage, which is my eight week period, to cover this entire period, which is my test period. Now, how would I do that? Well, with these guys, I could do. 80k so they're back at full plus I could do 20k which covers this period down here that's a hundred grand and there's still nobody in this mix that's making over a hundred thousand dollars annualized if I do that so I basically just prepaid this two-week time period if I do the same thing with these guys I've got 64k plus 16K equals 80K. With this person, let's assume that I bring them back to you to get my FT count right. I've got 6K plus 1500 equals 7500. And as you can see, I'm pretty darn close to this number, and I made them whole. So then the question is, what do I do with us? So with the, C with the owner and the CEO, I think that's more of a cash flow driven decision um, that I'd look at in terms of, you know, do you put yourself on hold? Maybe you go on unemployment, consider yourselves part time at that, at that time point, or do you potentially dip into these dollars, depending on what your rent and utilities actually are, because there's no reason to leave payroll dollars on the table. But now you got coverage. And let's say there's no recovery. Well, or recovery is not inside or it's going to be a slow ramp up. Again, you know, you just look at these guys again and have them potentially go back on unemployment uh, during this window. They're still whole and you bought yourself another month. So this is the way I played out to make sure that you've got your FTE count right, which it is, and you've got your dollars right, which they are for the purposes of maximum forgiveness. So, hope this helped.